These empty buildings used to be in the heart of Stockton. I thought it'd be there forever. <laughs> little remains of what used to be called Little Manila. Sisters Lillian and Violet remember Little Manila as children. The Filipinos line the streets. After the U.S. took the Philippines as a colony in 1902, many came here searching for an opportunity, such as a job or a college education. Many took jobs on farms. Lillian and Violet's father came to Stockton from the Philippines sometime between 1916 to 1917. He started working in the field before becoming a labor contractor and then a small business owner in Little Manila. He owned a grocery store, was a partner at a gambling house, and the Kizan Hotel. It was torn down in 1969. It's now a parking lot underneath the freeway. You know how many rooms there were? Uh, I don't know. At least 82. Little Manila stretched for several blocks off El Dorado Street in downtown Stockton. I lived on the fringe of Little Manila, but um, we were within walking distance of two blocks of Little Manila, and we did a lot of shopping with the Chinese uh, delicatessens, and of course, any Filipino food that we wanted. By the 1920s, Stockton became the hub for Filipino Americans. Little Manila was a place Filipinos can be accepted. It was an unspoken law that if you were a person of color in the 1930s, you were not welcome north of Main Street. Stockton was one of the largest cities in the Delta area where there were other Filipinos and work could be found. There was room for them to stay, camps, hotels, lodges, people's homes. They let people get their mail there. So when they came to back to town after being uh, either in the camps, working in the grapes, working in the orchards, when they came back to Stockton, they could pick up their mail here. Much of the Filipino-American history has been documented by people like academic Don Mabalan, who was born and raised in Stockton. Terry Torres with the Filipino-American National Historical Society has looked to her books and research for information. Torres says there were many firsts for the Stockton area because of the Filipino community. Churches, shops, and clubs were just a few to name. Labor leaders like Larry Itliang fought for equal rights and conditions in the field. Based on Terry's research, there were 45,000 Filipinos in the U.S., according to 1930 census data, and 25,000 of them were working in crops in San Joaquin County. However, by the 1960s, redevelopment happened. Little Manila changed, and so did the entire neighborhood surrounding it. People were forced to move out. They lost their jobs. They did not have enough money to rebuild their businesses because whatever money that was given by the government for destroying or, or demolishing their businesses, it wasn't enough to restart. It's like coming back to a desert, you know, coming back where nothing, you can't remember anything because it's not there anymore. It's like someone took an eraser and cleaned the, the board. <laughs> Lillian passed away of cancer two months after this interview. We went through photos of her family and her time as an occupational therapist, as well as her life in Little Manila. A photo of her is up with her sister at the Filipino American National Historical Society Museum. Mama, Papa, isn't that Mrs. Unsud? According to the most recent census data with the American Community Survey for 2019, Filipino Americans make up the largest Asian American group in the city at an estimated 28,000 people in the city of Stockton. However, only a couple of buildings are left of Little Manila today. The sounds of people and music have been replaced by traffic noise, and its history preserved by people who know it. Its rich past has led to a powerful and tight-knit community today.